This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, in this video we'll learn how to identify that the rexus is intending to go radial and how to identify it early and stop and take corrective measures. Hi, I'm Dr. Deepak Meghur. Welcome to another interesting case and I'll be sharing few tips here. Now, this is a 55-year-old lady who has an intumescent cataract and uh, we expect that the rexus could be slightly tricky in this case. So, as usual, we make the side ports chamber with air and stain trepan blue under the air bubble so that we get a good staining of the anti-capsule. It is refilled with dispersive OVD. I'm using a mixture of chondritin sulfate and sodium alernate to maintain the chamber. The main 2.8 millimeter entry is done and now is the time to perform the rexus. Okay, the first triggering factor, the puncture is not so smooth. It's a slightly more jerky. We have a cruciate tear now and fortunately it has not run away. One of the reasons why it has not run away is because uh, there is some amount of egress of the liquefied cortex out. So this reduces the intracapsular pressure a bit. But still, the capsule is quite tense and the tear is irregular. There's always a risk of the tear, which is sub running away towards the equator. So I need to be mindful of that. So I quickly grab uh, one of the flaps and begin to tear. And as I go through with my first pass, at this point, I can see that the rexus tear has changed its direction and is now is vulnerable for extending to the periphery. So immediately I come out, I want to re-pressurize the eye, I want to ensure the chamber does not shallow, I go in and inject OVD. Now I'm going to complete my rexus. Now at this stage, I'm in my rescue mode. So what do I do? I don't fold the capsule, I keep it flat and then pull it centripetally. So I'm not using the sharing method of creating the rexus, I'm using the tearing method. So this is a strategy which I use to do the rescue maneuver. Although the tear has nowhere gone near the mid-periphery, but it's more likely to go. So early diagnosis is the remedy here and the corrective strategy is to keep the flap flat and use the tearing technique. So when you tear like this with the flap unfolded and flat, the tear is uncontrolled, but it's more likely to be within the center and it's unlikely to run away. So that flap is torn and we have a sort of a rexus which is not complete. There is a small V-shaped tear still present. So I can't proceed with the surgery as yet. So I need to take care of this part. So now we have an irregular eccentric shaped rexus, but this is good enough. I now need to decompress the capsular bag before attempting a second rexus. You can see that the swollen lens fibers are all around in the mid periphery and towards the equator. If I don't decompress the bag sufficiently enough, there's always a risk of the rexus tear extending to the periphery while doing the second extension. So the most critical step here is to thoroughly decompress the bag by aspirating the swollen cortex and epinucleus. So I'm going with my FACO probe and the second instrument is the Sinscuke to aspirate all the overlying epinucleus. The second instrument helps me to just rotate the nucleus. This helps us to disengage all the cortex which is stuck in the equator and hence we are able to aspirate most of the swollen epinucleus and cortex. So the trick here is to have an adequate decompression before venturing into secondary enlargement. Over is placed in the antechamber. A micro scissors is introduced to the right hand side port to give a tangential cut to the anterior capsule using the capsular axis forceps. The flap is held and then it is folded now. And now I'm going to use a sharing technique to convert uh, this into a bigger rexus. Now mind you, at this stage, I'm not using the tearing technique. Rather, I'm using the conventional shearing technique where the capsule is folded and then it is torn in the circular pattern. Now I could achieve this simply because the capsular bag did not have the raised intracapsular pressure at this stage. So there's a reason why it was possible. Now we have a decent capsule opening. So I want to do the enlargement on the other side of the capsule as well. Again, the micro scissors is used from the other side port to give a small nick. And then I go in through the main incision, use the forceps to enlarge the capsule opening on the other side. So the capsule is folded and then it is a small strip of the capsule is torn off and just resulting in an enlarged capsule opening. So now it's time to FACO. 
Now, nucleus management is obviously the easiest part of the surgery here. The superficial epinucleus and cortex is aspirated out. Time to perform the direct phaco chop. The nucleus is relatively soft. I'm using lesser power here. The power is set to about 20% longitudinal in burst mode. I realize that even this power is slightly more. I'm reducing it maybe to 10% and then the tip is buried into the substance of the nucleus. A vertical chop maneuver is being done. I'm using a sharp chopper in my left hand. For this density of cataract, even a sense cue could very well do the job. So the nucleus is very soft and crumbly. I'm unable to get a grip. Just change the position and then the chopping maneuvers is continued until we have about five fragments. So time to emulsify each of these fragments and uh, one of the fragments is pulled out of the bag and then emulsified. Similarly, the other fragments are then pulled out and emulsified in a very controlled manner. So we have few cortical fibers remaining and the remaining cortex in this mature cataract is sometimes very tricky, you know. Uh, they'll be sticking on to the posterior capsule and the best way to deal with it is always go and do hydro polish. That's what I'm trying to do here. Squid a little bit of BSS onto the posterior capsule, preferably by pressing down the posterior lip. This ensures that uh, you get adequate uh, physical force to flush off the attachment of the fibers from the posterior capsule. I go in and refill the chamber with OVD in time to remove these fibers. So remember that uh, although very little cortex is left behind in a mature cataract, sometimes it could be tricky and we need to be mindful about being very gentle when you're trying to aspirate this cortex. The cortex aspiration is done. The chamber is filled with OVD and the planned intraocular lens is being implanted into the bag. The OVD both in front and behind the lens is aspirated. That's it. The case is done. So let me go back and rewind and let us examine the rexus part in slow motion. So I just want to highlight that uh, there are certain moments where you have to be alert and be proactive. The moment as I'm trying to lift the flap and perform the rexus, after the first point, at this point itself, I realize that the tear has changed the direction. Now, if I can just pause here and then continue with the trajectory of the tear now, it was clearly hinting out that it is going directly towards the opposite equator. So timing of realization is very critical. At this time, I stopped it and I put in OVD. Again, a pause here. Where I'm putting the OVD, I'm not putting the OVD in the center of the capsule bag or under the capsule flap. I'm consciously putting it in the peripheral, almost near the angle. This ensures that the OVD does not get within the capsule bag opening, which can again increase the intracapsular pressure. And the second advantage is also it flattens the capsule flap. And now the strategy is not to fold the capsule. Now, typically what we do is fold the capsule and tear. So in this case, we're not folding the capsule, keeping it flat and then pulling it centripetally. So this results in a tear, which is slightly uncontrolled, but it can be uncontrolled, but be rest assured that it's unlikely to run towards the equator. It's always being pulled towards the center and that's what happens. Again, there was a small notch here again. So I just took care of that notch as well before decompressing the bag. So decompressing the bag after this initial sort of a rexus was done is very critical because if we attempt a secondary enlargement of the rexus with the swollen cortex still in the capsule bag, more often than not, the secondary attempt of enlarging the capsule would end up in the tear running towards the equator. So lessons would be identify very early when the rexus tear has changed its trajectory. Stop, inject OVD in the right way, in the right place and then use the right strategy of keeping the flap unfolded flat and pull it centrally. You'll be fine. That's all. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.